Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be discussing a topic which is of ultimate importance, because this issue, if you aren't careful, can be quite the setback to your progress as a lifter. This is a series called Digging Your Grave, where we will talk about places in your exercise programming where things can go wrong. Today we'll be covering low back fatigue, how to tell if a program is giving you too much of it, and steps you can take to avoid accruing too much and potentially save yourself from the infamous Snap City. In my personal hypothesis, most injuries in the lower back that occur outside of true one rep maxes, which always carry additional risk anyways, come from chronic accrual of fatigue, which isn't dissipated. This can lead to a muscular strain in the back, discomfort while sitting, standing, and lying down, degradation in exercise, form, and technique due to fatigue, and generally a lower quality of life. This video will not be discussing injuries to the spine. Although I believe there's some overlap between avoiding spinal injuries and avoiding muscular ones, spinal injuries require the aid of doctors to diagnose. So then, what can we say is too much fatigue? Well, a simple way to answer that question is to ask yourself this. Will my lower back recover by the next time I train it? If the answer is no, you probably are training it too much. And if you get to the point where this is regularly happening session to session, you will likely start to notice the effects of accruing excess fatigue. The muscles of the lower back are often not trained in the same way as other muscles of the body, as they are almost always trained isometrically. The isometric use of the muscles in the low back means that they don't always accrue fatigue in the same way as other ones. For example, when fatigued, the spinal erectors will often feel weak or otherwise stiff, hard to move or locally sore. In contrast, muscles like the triceps, quads, or chest will often feel like they've been ripped apart, but are still capable of movement. With that in mind, we can look at a close companion to low back fatigue, too much axial loading. Although not all exercises that cause axial loading work your lower back, many of the most common ones do, both high bar and low bar squats, overhead press from the front, bench press with leg drive and a hard arch, and any kind of hip hinge with your feet on the floor, such as conventional deadlifts or good mornings, will stress your lower back. This isn't a bad thing, in fact training your lower back is a good thing and makes you a more resilient human being. However, like many things, too much of a good thing can become a bad thing. Some strategies you can use to reduce low back fatigue in training, and thus the likelihood you will accrue long term fatigue are, number one, reducing the RPE of lifts that cause that fatigue. By doing this you can allow your lower back a chance to breathe and catch up and recover, while the rest of your body can still acquire gains, just with not as much intensity or difficulty. You can still make good strength gains without needing to push your RPE very high, especially if you don't intend to compete in something like powerlifting. Mind you, you may not need to do this for every lift in your program that works the low back, so for hypertrophic gains, including higher RPE sets of higher rep work, such as 3 by 8 to 12 squats, will still be advised. Remember the goal isn't to eliminate stressing the lower back, just to reduce it so it isn't a problem. The second strategy is changing your form. I'm particularly biased against low bar squats because they illustrate this well. Low bar squats do allow you to lift more weight in a squat pattern, however they also recruit your low back and glutes and hamstrings to a greater extent, causing more fatigue. If you're instead squatting high bar in close stance, you may find that although you're lifting less weight more than likely, you are going to have much less fatigue in the lower back, and this for our purposes of reducing overall fatigue accrual is good. Thirdly is using free weight and machine variations which train the same target muscles but do not tax the lower back so much, such as benching without an arch or feet up, behind the neck presses if you can safely do them, back extensions and variations of those which although they train the lower back still, deload the spine, front squats, zercher squats, and other front loaded squat variations, leg presses, leg curls, machine presses of all kinds, and back training machines, as well as most calisthenics. All of these strategies can also be used to essentially make or find space in your program to train your muscles more or more intensely. You may find that, for instance, switching from low to high bar squats allows you to get a set or two more of quad volume per week without fatiguing your lower back. Don't neglect one set per week, stuff like that can really add up, especially with the added sustainability that using these methods allow. If we take that example I used earlier, say you normally used to deload or take a light week once every six weeks, accruing in 10 total sets of quads per week of hard training, this is 60 sets of quads in that training cycle. However, after switching to high bar, you are able to train hard for eight or more weeks without deloading while adding two sets to your quad training. 
by the end of the same six week training period, you've gained an additional 10 sets of quads for a total of 70. And you may not still have to take a break for another few weeks. Or if you're particularly smart with your programming, many months. Part of the nuance of training your lower back is knowing how much of it you can do. I found out that around 20 sets per week of involvement for my lower back is where I started to gather fatigue and it made my training miserable. But since then, I've found ways to get fewer sets for my lower back while still making gains in other body parts using the methods I've described, changing my form, utilizing other variations, and reducing the difficulty rating of the lifts which do tax it extensively. I now sit at just around 10 to 13 sets per week, which tax my lower back in a difficult way, and have since greatly improved compared to the darkest times in the training. However, the range which you will find for yourself comfortable within the terms of sets per week will depend on you and your personal tolerance to volume and leverages for certain lifts. This has been a pretty short and sweet overview of the causes and solutions to low back fatigue. Hopefully you have learned something that can aid you in either progressing safely further while training your lower back, or you've been equipped with strategies to help you dig yourself out of the pit of low back fatigue that you've found yourself in. That all said, take care, train hard, and have a great day.